Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and this is my channel where I talk about all the houseplant things. Today is really exciting because we're doing a January favorites video. These videos, I basically round up a bunch of plants and plant products that helped me this month, were, I don't know, impactful or really stuck out to me and show them to you. And of course, as soon as I start talking, my dog thinks I'm talking to him and he feels like he needs to come up and say hi. <laughs> so here is our Leo moment. We have to say hi to Leo. Say hi, Leo. Hi. <laughs> okay, go down. So today is the most epic snowstorm I have ever seen. As many of you know, I grew up in Arizona. I only moved to Missouri last year, or I guess in 2020 I moved here. So it's actually insane to see this much snow falling and I don't really know what to think. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is a plant. This right here is a variegated Epipremnum pinnatum. And I picked this one up. I have another one in my greenhouse cabinet, which is much smaller, but this one I picked up from Flower Farm in Kansas, uh, what city is it actually in? I don't remember, but it's in Kansas, right across the Missouri border. And look how cute she is. I have it on a board. I recently did this in a vlog that you're going to see sometime soon. I'm just waiting for a brand approval, but anyway. So yeah, this is my variegated Epipremnum. The newest leaf has really, really beautiful variegation, but other than that, it's sort of in and out, like a lot of the variegation like is a lighter green on top of the dark green, so it's not super intense yet. But I'm hoping that as it attaches to the pole and starts to grow bigger and bigger, it will put out some really fun variegation. And I kind of just have it on this short plank for now. It's definitely going to need a bigger plank sometime soon, but I just have it on this one for right now because I don't know, I just wanted to put it on something and I had this piece of wood sitting around. So this is by no means its permanent home, but it is going to help train it to start like climbing and stuff like that. So anyway, I honestly hadn't really heard about this plant too much or it felt like a very unachievable plant, but I feel like it's starting to become more available out there. So if you're looking for a trailing or climbing plant that has really great variegation and really cute little fenestrations on it too, you should definitely check this one out. This next one is a tool, and I was hesitant to talk about this one because it's really not like that relevant to houseplants, but this circular saw is new. This is what actually got me through this entire project of building my green wall and the ladder and everything else, and somebody asked about the model number, so I will have the model number on the screen because it's just like a bunch of numbers. So if you're interested in this circular saw, it was one that we had to special order. It wasn't available at our local hardware store, and I'm gonna put this down because it's really heavy. <laughs> but basically, we decided to go with DeWall, and the reason that you should go with one brand is because if you're using battery tools, the batteries are pretty much interchangeable across the tools. You just have to make sure that you have the right voltage battery, but this is not like a power tool class, so I'm not gonna get too far into that, but anyway, I got a lot of feedback from that video of people saying, you know, I thought that it would be much harder to use power tools, or I thought it was so much more complicated, and my video inspired people to pick up their power tools. Um, some of you even already had power tools, and just use them for something. Use them to build a plant stand or whatever else, and I think that's awesome. I definitely am very new to power tools, and thankfully my husband is very well versed in power tools, so he's able to be super helpful. But also, if you have no one around you that's good with power tools, you can definitely also learn online. There are a ton of videos out there that will teach you how to use tools, how to find the right tool, how to do anything regarding tools. So I would highly suggest you to not be intimidated by power tools and maybe go check them out next time you're at the hardware store and see if maybe there's a project you might want to try. And if it's in your budget, maybe you'll grab a power tool and try it out. Okay, the next thing is this really, really beautiful neon philodendron. This one I got from uh, Vintage Hill a couple weeks ago, and I was absolutely obsessed with this for a couple visits. Like I visit there relatively often because I help make videos for their social media. So I'm out there like at least once a month. So there was a few visits in a row that I saw this and I finally decided to just get it because it is so beautiful and it looks so nice in this macrame hanger. I just made this macrame hanger with Adam and Nicole. We're gonna have a video coming out about it on our Potted Together channel, so stay tuned for that this month in February. I think I love this one especially because it has the very, the varied colors. So we have like the very yellow and then we have this like light green color and I just think that it looks so pretty. 
and it adds so much depth to a plant that might otherwise look kind of flat. I mean, most of my plants are either variegated or have really detailed veining or fenestrations or something like that. So plants like this can oftentimes get lost in the shuffle just because they don't have like a ton of visual interest besides the color. So I really like that this one has like those varied colors and it's gonna start trailing soon. And I just think that it's really lovely and a beautiful addition to my green wall corner. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is my plant folio. And I know that I talk about this all the time. I try to name drop every time it comes up on camera, but there are some new people around here. So hi, if you're new here, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm trying to think of you guys when I make these videos because I want to make sure that I'm covering all of my bases and not leaving things out just because I assume that everybody knows. So if you've been around for a while, maybe just check your phone for a second. <laughs> Okay, so this is a plant folio. It is made by the company Plant Folio, and it is a really, really awesome guy named Eli. He makes these amazing repotting stations. Basically, it folds out like this. You have a repotting mat on either side that is removable, and then there's optional sidewalls that you can get, which will hold like your tools and things like that if you want you know, that addition. I think it's an extra cost. But anyway, so I use this to repot if I'm ever repotting like at my table or I will most often use it when I'm watering. So I put it over my sink and as you can see, it has like this metal grate on it and it's all waterproof. The wood is completely sealed so it won't rot or anything. It won't be negatively affected by the water. So it's just clear like that and it gives you an elevated space to put your plants in the sink when you water them because sometimes when you're putting plants down into the sink to water them, you can set a pot on top of another plant's leaves and then that leaf gets ruined or broken or whatever else. And it's just nice to have everything on one level. This also helps you water more plants at once. Like this will fit over a standard size sink. So as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than my frame of vision on my lens. But yeah, you can fit it over a standard size sink and then you just can fill it up with plants. And because this is, you know, open the water falls right through and also bonus because it's all open and it sits on top of your sink you can water your plants in your sink while there are dishes in the sink <laughs> so that's always something that prevents me from watering is if i have to do dishes first i hate doing the dishes i just hate it so this is a really nice thing to have because it keeps the plants above the, the bottom of the sink and prevents all of the things that I just said. And it's really, really beautiful. And honestly, if I could have it out 24 seven, I would, cause it's really beautiful. I have an affiliate link down below. So if you purchase through that link, I will get a little something which helps me, helps my channel. And also you get a little discount too. Okay, the next baby up is my Hoya Callistophylla. Now I realized a couple months ago that I hardly ever talk about this plant, but it is definitely one of my favorites. I think it is so beautiful. And a couple plant chore videos ago, I saw that it had like three or four blooms on it, like active peduncles that were like trying to bloom. So all of those fell off. <laughs> And it was really sad. So they were all in this stage when they fell off and I don't know exactly what happened Maybe they didn't have enough water or enough light I don't really know but it was all happening during the transition of fixing up this room So they definitely weren't getting the conditions that they normally would so I feel like the blooms were just like not we're not doing this <laughs> not humid enough, something's not right. So they rebloomed, and I'm really thankful for that. So if you ever have a Hoya that blooms, don't cut off the peduncle because it will rebloom several times. And then eventually that bloom, like head the peduncle will be done. I don't know all the exact terminology for Hoyas, so like, you know, don't come for me. But you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm really excited to see these blooms if they actually happen. I did spoil it for myself and look up a photo online. And I'm really glad that I did that because it just makes me like even more excited for the plant, but it hasn't done anything as far as putting out new leaves in a really, really long time. The most recent leaf was this like big guy, but it's just such a beautiful Hoya. Like it has just the most beautiful like crocodile texture. I just think that it is so gorgeous. And I recently repotted it in this colorful pot and I really, really like this combination. I think it's really striking and cute. So I had to repot it because I needed the pot that it was in for my hanging wall. The next thing that I wanna talk about is just the general idea of 
seeds. So I am going to be starting my garden in the next couple of weeks. I'm planning on starting seeds probably mid-February. So from now until then, I have to figure out my grow situation. So I have a bunch of grow lights that were extra from my like strips that I have in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. So I'm probably going to use those. I was planning on doing like this whole setup, like buying like a rolling cart and doing all of this like crazy stuff. But honestly, I don't think that I can afford that this year. Maybe I can, but I'm trying to cut costs for De La Plants because I had to pay my taxes and <laughs> that really sucked. So <laughs> I kind of got a little reality check on my spending and I don't know if I'm going to do like a full blown brand new setup for my seedlings or if I'm just gonna try to like scrounge together things that I already have which I think that I'm just gonna scrounge together things that I already have because of money saving, which is a good thing. It's always good to save money and use things that you already have. It's like the most sustainable thing that I could do, so. All right, I've convinced myself. I'm being sustainable and I'm being money conscious. So heck yeah, I'm gonna start my seeds using stuff I already have. Thank you guys for joining me for this little journey. <laughs> okay, so I got these three seed packs when I was in Indianapolis. So I got kale. I've been eating this a lot because this kale comes in my Green Chef boxes quite often. And then I got some calendula, which I'm pretty sure is like an edible or medicinal flower. I medicinal, <laughs> I say that word weird, sorry. Medicinal, M medicinal, medicinal. What did I say the first time? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I think that it's like you can do stuff with it. <laughs> Anyway, it also blooms a lot, which is great. And then I got some glass gem corn. I saw that Laura from Garden Answer had these seeds, or had some glass gem corn, and it was so beautiful. And corn seems really easy to grow, so I'm gonna try that. I think I'm just gonna have like a container, and I'm just gonna like throw some corn in it. Maybe some corn that you actually eat, because I don't know if this is edible. Yeah, cross and display, or for grinding into cornmeal, or for simply popping. Oh wait, you can eat this. Okay, anyway. I need to do some research, obviously, but those are some seeds that I got from a store. And then I have some seeds in this little bag, which look like they molded. So I'm gonna have to try again, but <laughs> I didn't, I don't think that I let them dry out properly after I took them out of the squash. These are some seeds from my butternut squash that I cooked the other week. And I don't really eat butternut squash very often. Like I don't really eat squash often at all, but I feel like it's such a great meal for winter time. And if I can figure out how to grow a bunch of them and then store them properly so that they last me through the winter, I feel like that would be a really great way to like yeah grow food that i can eat throughout the whole year um so that's something that i'm trying to do this year with my garden is just like grow more food that i can store for later because this last summer i had so many tomatoes so many zucchini like i still have zucchini in my freezer um i need to eat that so like most of what i grew i ate it all pretty fast after besides the zucchini i was trying to give the zucchini away but like the tomatoes and all of that i ate them like almost on the spot because i love fresh grown tomatoes anytime i eat grocery tomatoes now especially after eating my own homegrown tomatoes I think they're so gross and they just taste like water so they're also out of season so that's probably why they don't taste that good but I don't really know like now that I've started to grow my own food I'm super interested in like the whole seasonality of food and like wanting to eat with the seasons and I'm just like super intrigued by that and I wonder if a food is out of season how it's still being produced but it's probably like growing in a greenhouse somewhere honestly I don't know all that said, when my grandma visited me a couple months ago, I was telling her how I really want to grow like all these different types of food. And I heard that if you save seeds from fruit and vegetables, they're not going to grow unless you buy the organic version. And she looked at me like I was nuts. She's like, that's not true at all. You can definitely save seeds from your food. So ever since that conversation a couple months ago, I've been saving seeds from fruit and veggies or mostly just veggies that I buy at the grocery store. So I have saved some bell pepper seeds, I saved some spaghetti squash seeds, and now I have some butternut squash seeds, which I might have to start over with these ones. I need to like, I don't know, maybe see if I can soak them in water and figure something out. But either way, as long as you let the seeds dry out and you like give them a good wash, they should be fine to store and use to start plants for your garden. Definitely do some outside research besides watching this video before you do that. But I do know that my grandma says it's possible and my grandma has been food gardening for many years. So that is something that I'm going to trust her on and see what happens. Also, I got some loofah seeds from my friend Megan. She actually just started a YouTube channel. I'll have her channel linked down below if you're interested. She has like houseplant content and I think she's 
gonna do garden content too. And we might collab on something this summer or spring or whatever. But anyway, she sent me some loofah seeds and I'm really excited because if you didn't know, loofah, like, you know, the scrub things, you can grow them in your backyard. And it's a vining plant and they grow a lot, a lot of sponges. So I'm really excited to grow that and see how many I can make and like give them to my friends and make fun things with them. It's gonna be great. The next plant is my philodendron glorious. This plant makes me smile so big. I'm just like so proud of it. So I unboxed this plant from a friend a couple of months ago, like maybe six months ago or something. It was really small, but it was a healthy plant. So I was like, okay, great. This is gonna be awesome. And by the way, the glorious is a mix between the melanochrysum and the gloriosum. I have a small version of the gloriosum and I don't currently have a melanochrysum, but I have had them before. And honestly, they did not do well in my care. So anytime I can get my hands on like a melanochrysum cross, like I have a philodendron splendid back here, which is a varicosum melanochrysum cross, that plant is doing great. So <laughs> I feel like the actual melanochrysum is really picky, but when you cross it with other things, it's a lot better. So anyway, this is one of the newest leaves that came out. It is so, so beautiful. Like honestly, very glorious, if you will. And look at this leaf too. The, the leaves are just like long and round. And I just think that that is the most beautiful combination. And they're so silky and soft. And I'm just really excited to see where this goes. I am going to put it on a pole or something when I see more aerial root growth. Not, not a pole, a plank of wood when I see more aerial root growth because I would love to see these leaves get huge. The gloriosum veining really comes through on mine. So I'm I'm really excited to see that on a larger scale. I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Ikea Besta units. So that is the Ikea unit that I have underneath my green wall for storage. And honestly, it is the greatest thing ever. It's so like nondescript or what would be the word? It's so subtle, like you honestly don't even notice that it's in here, yet it's holding like 90% of my plant tools and supplies and everything else, which were at one point scattered all around my house in different rooms, which is so stressful. So I have some advice for you. If you have all of your plant tools everywhere, just put them all in one place. It makes your life so much easier. And if you're looking for a storage unit to put them in, I would suggest the Ikea Besta unit because it just feels tucked away and hidden and it's white and it blends in with my wall. It would be very easy to paint if you wanted to paint it your wall color. But yeah, it's really great. It's a deep storage unit, so it holds quite a bit of stuff and you can have it low to the ground or you can put it on legs. It's just really versatile. Like a lot of Ikea pieces are versatile and it's hard to know which ones are actually good and like worth it. Okay, I've got two more things to show you and they are both plants. The first one I have to show you is this Manfreda chocolate chip. Yeah, Manfreda chocolate chips. So I got a lot of questions about this plant when I showed it in a TikTok, I think. And yeah, it's just like one of those plants that I don't see very often. Like I have never seen one of these before actually. And if I have, I was not paying attention because I feel like, yeah, I just have never seen this before. Now that I'm trying to think, I cannot think of a time. Anyway, point is, I got this at my local nursery. It was like 13 bucks, which is so cheap for this big, unique plant. And I have it currently sitting in my uh, green wall. I haven't repotted it yet just because I'm kind of, I don't know, I just haven't done it yet, but I have it just sitting in a pot. And look at how unique, like the spots on it, the wavy leaves. I'm just honestly obsessed. I think that it is so cool. And it's putting out a lot of new growth, I can tell, because it's like a lighter color and then it will age into this like really heavy dark green color, which is so beautiful. Okay, and the last thing I really wanted to highlight is my Sirius Spiralis cactus, which, oh my gosh, she is so beautiful. This cactus has really been through it. it first debuted on my channel I think when I repotted it blindfolded with Adam and Nicole on our potted together channel oh wait no that wasn't on potted together I don't remember whose channel that was but that was before potted together was a thing and if you have no idea what I'm talking about I have a podcast with two of my best plant friends Adam not dude and Nicole my clean leaves and we used to do collab videos all the time and then we were like why don't we just do a podcast together because we all love podcasts and it just worked out so anyway that was the first debut of this cactus and i got it from box cactus nursery in tucson arizona they were growing them from seed which is really cool 
and yeah i just nabbed one one day and for a very long time it looked like very skinny and flat i don't know how else to describe it but it didn't look very healthy um, when i was living in tucson especially and then i moved out here which seems a little weird but i moved out here and i put it outside and it just took off like it probably grew two inches this last summer and it had like this the spiral like continued and it's just so pretty i just think that this is so unique and it's so beautiful <laughs> i don't know how else to describe it and it was sitting in like a plant box with a bunch of other plants for a really long time and i feel like because of that you didn't really get to see this plant you didn't really see how beautiful it was on its own so now that I have it in this like terracotta bell pot on its own, it really is its own feature presentation and it is so beautiful. All right, you guys, that is going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you perhaps learned something or just enjoyed this video in general, just had a laugh, had a, had a smile, had a relaxing moment while I talked about some plants and products that were particularly fun this month. If you have any January favorites, feel free to leave them down below. I'm always looking for new fun plant products and plants to fixate on, of course. I think we're all, <laughs> I think we can all agree on that one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you haven't already. My video uploads are typically every Tuesday and Friday, but sometimes things get jumbled and that doesn't exactly happen. So I think it's best to just have the notification bell on so that you just get a notification to your phone anytime Miss Becca De La Plants uploads a video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!